Had we not created a permanent fund here in Alaska, most people agree, no doubt those dollars would have all been spent in the traditional manner that has gotten those states and nations into trouble. That is massive low interest or no interest loans and subsidies and construction of bricks and steel and infrastructure and the presumption is going to foster healthy economic development. But because oil prices vacillate dramatically, when they plunge, then in many instances those countries are left holding the bag and the people are destitute. When I was invited back to the World Bank here a few years ago, they told me they had looked at every state and nation and how they had handled their oil wealth and concluded that Alaska had done by far the best job. And they attributed it in largest measure to that dividend program. The dividend program has created, in essence, a militant ring of defense that surrounds that permanent fund that whenever the politicians hope to invade it or wish to invade it, the shareholders rise up in outrage and protest. If there's a good and worthy cause, they will permit those dollars to be spent or more appropriately to be extracted back in the form of user fees or taxes that more appropriately allocate the, the benefits to those folk who are willing to pay more for them. In other words, rather than simply using those dollars to create a new government program, put the money in the people's pockets and require the politicians to come to them and extract those dollars back through appropriate means. Thereby, the individual who benefits most from a program, of course, pays the most. But in Alaska, the success of the dividend program is evidenced by the fact that a few years ago when they attempted to tap a portion of the monies that might have gone for dividends, some 83% of the people by public vote rejected it overwhelmingly. Anyhow, that article back in April prompted me to send a copy of it to Senator Ted Stevens, suggesting that perhaps he should discuss it with the president. There appeared to be the potential of establishing in Iraq something that has apparently never occurred before, and that is creating a democratic capitalistic mindset on the part of the people. Now we have terrorist acts, of course, which the people perceive of them, for example, blowing up somebody else's pipeline. They don't sense, have a sense of ownership. If they perceived it as our pipeline, and the majority of people recognize that every time they, they interrupted oil flow, it was money out of their individual pockets, there'd be a resistance to the type of thing that is occurring over there to date. Anyhow, Senator Stevens wrote me back and said he had discussed it with President Bush, who was very much interested. He said, in essence, stay tuned. About two weeks later, Colin Powell is on national television, enthusiastically endorsing the idea of a dividend program for Iraq. Several Congress people subsequently commented thereon. Senator Lisa Murkowski has put in a bill to at least encourage this concept in the form of a resolution in the National Congress. But I was also then last February invited to speak to a group, an international congregation in Washington, who was advocating a permanent fund dividend program concept for Iraq. And it was very interesting, by the time the conference was over and people had examined and understood the Alaskan program, several nations and their representatives present indicated they were very much intrigued with the idea and would like to pursue it in their countries. A Brazilian senator by the name of Eduardo Simplicy told me that he had read my book in which I outlined the dividend program in Alaska, its origin, and its cause and effect, and he ins was inspired to introduce a legislation in the Brazilian Congress to create a permanent fund, which they did and the governor signed. And he was ecstatic over the results and indicated the Brazilians thought it was the best thing that ever happened to them. 
By the time that conference ended, they were talking about proposing dividend programs in Iraq, Chad, Bolivia, Venezuela, um, British Columbia, Greenland, and two or three other countries. But I have subsequently heard very little about it.